And good morning, beautiful, mostly sunny, Sunday morning, here in Lake Manor Chapel, Chatsworth, California. From Acts chapter 11, the latter part of the chapter. And they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived there and saw that the, what the grace of God had done, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Acts 11, 23, NIV translation. And they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch when he came and had seen the grace of God. He was glad and encouraged them all that with purpose of heart they should continue with the Lord. New King James Version, same verse. And they sent Barnabas off to Antioch. Then when he arrived and witnessed the grace of God, he rejoiced and began to encourage them all with resolute heart to remain true to the Lord. Same verse, New American Standard Version. Um, depending on which one you read, translations vary somewhat, uh, particularly in the Old Testament because Hebrew is so nonspecific in the way it's written. It has no vowels and no punctuation and no capital letters, so you got to kind of guess at it. A little more specific in the Greek language, which is one reason I believe that's why, why God sent his son during a time when Greek was the world language predominantly speaking, and it's very specific. Uh, we use words like love, depending on what you're talking about, it could mean all kinds of things. I love the Lord. I also love spaghetti and meatballs. It's not the same thing. And so, in the Greek language, there's like four or five different words just, just for love. So, uh, scripture can be a little confusing. The translations are somewhat different, but there's, here's a way to approach it. If you're going to interpret uh, scripture in a proper fashion, you are to weigh everything by what Paul referred to as, quote unquote, the whole counsel of God, the whole counsel of God. Uh, there's some folks in the church that get caught up into foolish and stupid arguments over what scripture means. Paul wrote to Timothy, he said, don't do that, avoid that. You ever get caught up in a foolish and stupid argument with another believer? I have. And then you realize, oops, I'm not, I'm not supposed to do that. Um, some dwell on the finer details of scripture and uh, miss the big picture. Pharisees were famous for that. You know, They would, they would dwell on the minutia and miss, miss the point. And uh, we might say, those are the people that can't see the forest for the trees. You ever hear that expression? Can't see the forest for the trees. It, it means you're dwelling so much on the details, you miss the point of the whole thing. And so we, we go with the whole counsel of God. Paul adv advises us, don't just stare at the trees, examine the forest. In his farewell address to the elders at Ephesus, when we get to Acts 20, we'll see this. He said this, And indeed, now I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Now, in the verse I just read from Acts chapter 11, verse 23, from four different translations, each one slightly different, one word stands out. That's the word I want to focus on today with you. And the word is encourage. Barnabas was sent to do one thing. He was sent to encourage. Now, what does that mean? To be an encourager of others. And I want to keep the context within the church, within the body of Christ. To encourage means to inspire with hope or confidence. There's people that are good at that in the body of Christ. It means to to give support, to stimulate, to spur someone on. It is the same, by the way, the same word in the Greek New Testament used to describe the Holy Spirit. It is a word parakletos. It means one who calls from alongside. So that's what an encourager is. He is much like the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit's nature to strengthen, encourage, and comfort. That's what he does. And the reason I say that, yeah, the reason I say that is every once in a while you'll hear in your head a voice that is discouraging to you, is speaking words of condemnation and not encouragement. 
a voice in your head that emphasizes your faults and your failures. I want to tell you right now that is not the voice of the Holy Spirit when you hear that. That's the voice of the other guy. When we are tempted, we are also tested. Interesting, again, in the Greek New Testament, same word, either way. Depends on who's rooting for what outcome. If it's the devil, it's temptation. He wants you to fail. If it's God, it's a test. He wants you to win. And so context is so important. God tests us. He wants us to win. So along the way, in order to remain focused on the forest and not to get bogged down in studying trees, God sends us people who can help us with that. And uh, there are a lot of ministries in the church, and we're all different. Romans chapter 12. Exhortation or encouragement. Again, I'm going to talk a lot about Barnabas today. Exhortation or encouragement is listed as one of the many ministry gifts that exists in the body of Christ. Listen to this. See, a lot of times people go to 1 Corinthians 12, and go, what is my spiritual gift? Those are manifestations of the Spirit. He controls that. Don't you worry about that. He'll figure that out. If he wants you to do this, that, or the other, he'll tell you. But this is what God has ordained for church people to do to make a ministry whole. Listen to this from Romans chapter 12. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. That is a ministry gift that God has given to the church. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Romans 12, 4 through 8. I believe a healthy church has all of these gifts operating within the body, within the fellowship. And, uh, I must say, as a pastor, I particularly, over the years, have very much appreciated those who have the gift of encouragement. There are those among us who inspire us with hope. There are those who offer support, who stimulate us, who spur us on. It is a spiritual gift, and it is the very nature of the Holy Spirit himself to comfort, to encourage, and to exhort. And we're to do that for one another. Amen? Amen? That's one of the reasons we gather. Now, this nature of encouragement was also the nature of a man, just a man whose name was Joseph, Acts chapter 4. We would call him Joseph. But the apostles renamed him. They said, we're going to call you Barnabas, which means son of encouragement, because that's your gift, my man. You are an encourager. Barnabas, the encourager. Every church should have a Barnabas. I believe at least one. More is better. One's good. I want you to think for a moment of those among your own fellowship here at Chatsworth Lake Church. Who is that special brother or sister that lifts you up every time you see them? Some can't do that, but some do it very, very well. Encouragers are upbeat. Encouragers are optimistic. Their glass isn't half empty. It isn't even half full. It runneth over. Amen? Amen. They're hopeful. They are always looking up. Always looking up to the Lord. And they encourage us to remain true. To literally cleave unto the Lord. They inspire us. Of all the gifts that I just mentioned prophesying, ministering, teaching, giving, leading, showing mercy. There's not one that can help you through a dark time in your life like a Barnabas, like a son of encouragement. You're going to appreciate that person at that moment. So I'm going to read from Acts chapter 11 as Barnabas enters the scene at a place called Antioch. Here we go. Acts 11, beginning with verse 19 to the end of the chapter. Now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen, traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, 
preaching the word to no one but the Jews only. But some of them were men from Cyprus and Cyrene, who when they had come to Antioch spoke to the Hellenists, that is the, the Greek Jews, if you will, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. By the way, that's how that works. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed. Then news of these things came to the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent out Barnabas to go as far as Antioch. When he came and had seen the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them that all with purpose of heart should continue with the Lord. For he was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and full of faith, and a great many people were added to the Lord. Then Barnabas departed for Tarsus to seek Saul. They eventually become a ministry team. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. So it was that for a whole year, they assembled with the church and taught a great many people. And the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Did you know that? Up to that point, they weren't called Christians. But at Antioch, that, that name became the natural moniker for all of us. And in those days, it says, prophets came from Jerusalem to Antioch. Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world, which also happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. I mention that because that is also one of the ministry gifts in the body of Christ, prophesying. Now, you might think, well, prophesying, does that mean you're foretelling the future? It can mean that, but it also means, very simply, speaking forth the words of God. So, you and I can prophesy if we speak forth what God has said. So, Barnabas comes to Antioch. He sees the grace of God that had granted salvation to these Gentiles. And what was his reaction? He was glad. Literally, it means he rejoiced. That's part and parcel of being an encourager. When others are blessed, you rejoice. Not all about you. Encouragers are all about everybody but themselves. Encouragers, you'll notice, probably when you're at fellowship time or sitting on the patio, encouragers will ask you, how are you doing? How are you doing? They never talk about themselves, really. Encouragers understand that even though we have given our hearts to the Lord, we are easily distracted by the busyness of life. And we can easily become discouraged by what we see and hear all around us, particularly in this last hour. If watching the news on television you find discouraging, turn it off. Go open your Bible. Read something that God has said. Encouragers remind us to look up, not down, not around, certainly not within. Look up. Encouragers remind us things like this, that God is still on the throne. How many of you know God is still on the throne? Amen. How many of you know that God is sitting high and looking low? Amen. Gary encourages me every week when he says that, and I appreciate it. He reminds us that God cares for us. That's what encouragers do. So Barnabas saw that the grace of God was being poured out in Antioch, and he was glad. But then he took his gladness a step further. He encouraged them. He entered into his ministry gift, and he encouraged them all that with purpose of heart, they should continue with the Lord. Just because you got saved, just because you put your faith in Jesus Christ, doesn't mean your journey has ended. It's only just begun. And you're going to need something for the rest of your life, and you can only get it in the body of Christ. It's called encouragement. You can't find it anywhere else. Remember when Jesus, Matthew 25, told the parable of the ten virgins? Remember that one? Five were foolish, five were wise. Interesting fact. It says, while the bridegroom was delayed, they all got drowsy and fell asleep. The wise along with the foolish. We need one another, people. We need one another to get through this life with our faith and our head on straight. Because everything the world is throwing at you, everything the devil is throwing at you, is trying to get you off target and off point. 
He wants you to stare at the trees. He wants you to see the forest. Hebrews 10.25, one of the most important verses about encouragement, tells us this. It says, we are not to forsake the assembling together of ourselves. Did you know that even your very presence in church on any given Sunday morning is in and of itself an encouragement to others just because you're here? It's true, I see some people nodding. That is the truth. When you're here, your, your presence is an encouragement. When you're not here, I wouldn't say it's discouraging, but there's an absence there, there's a hole. True encouragers don't just attend church. We've seen people come and go, especially in a smaller venue like ours. They come and go. See, I say that in a smaller venue because if you're at a mega church, you don't notice who comes and goes. There's too many people there. But here you know. Where's Bob? I haven't seen Bob for a few weeks. I say Bob because I don't think we have a Bob in here. <laughs> we haven't seen him for a while. We don't, do we? Okay, good. Um, that, that's the idea of, of, of an intimate church is everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows when they're there, when they're not there. Everybody cares. Everybody cares. Everybody wants to be encouraged and to encourage others. So true encouragers don't just attend church. They are church. Amen. You get my point? Now, when you come to church, you can sing, you can praise, you can worship. And we do all this as one. We pray together. Whenever we assemble, these are things we do. We call it corporately as the body of Christ. By the way, you can do all those things at home. You can even do them while you're driving your car. But there's one thing you cannot do as a Christian by yourself. You cannot encourage one another. You can't do it. You can't be a Barnabas for your brothers and sisters if you don't show up. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Better, much better. Okay. Okay. Now, this is interesting because Hebrews 10.25, we've all heard the verse, do not forsake the assembling together of yourselves, as is the habit of some, but encourage one another all the more as you see the day approaching. That is so timely and so relevant today. The day is approaching. The day is approaching when we will see unfold before our eyes the things that we've read about in Ezekiel and Daniel and the revelation of John. We're in the last hour. In fact, John wrote that 2,000 years ago, so we must be in the last couple of seconds. The day is approaching, and so we are to exhort or encourage one another all the more as we see the day approaching. This is the time, people, this is the time when we need to show up and be that Barnabas for the other brothers and sisters in our lives. So, a question for you. I'm going to close with two questions this morning. One is, whom in your own fellowship, in your home church, in your fellowship, would you consider is a Barnabas to you, an encourager to you? There's some that just really stand out. And then the final question, could that be you? Could you be that Barnabas? It's not magic. It just takes a loving relationship with your brothers and sisters and, and you care. You need people to lift you up, especially in this last hour. So Barnabas, wherever you are here this morning, thank you. By the way, Barnabas, you can be a girl. It's okay. In, in, the, in that sense, I'm, I'm not doing the gender thing, I'm just saying. It can be male, it can be female. The gifts of the ministry of the Spirit extend to all of God's people. In Christ, there is neither male nor female in that sense. So thank you, Barnabases, wherever you are. You know who you are. And those who are potential Barnabases, I say, go for it. <laughs> so may God bless you and encourage your heart to stay with his heart today and every day. That's a word of encouragement. Thank you for the story of Barnabas. I like that guy.